The city of Jerusalem is located about 33 miles east of the Mediterranean Sea. And it is built on a rocky plateau uh, at about 2,500 feet above sea level. And it has been called the city of Salem, which means city of peace. It has been called the city of David, the king. And it is the city where the Messiah revealed himself to the nation of Israel as their king. But it is also the city where he was rejected by his people as their king. And it is the place where he was crucified by them and by the Romans. Jerusalem was destroyed by the Babylonians, only to rise again. It was uh, also destroyed by the Romans, only to rise again from the ashes. And it is the city to which the Messiah will return to once again when he, the Lord Jesus Christ, returns to this earth. And he will rule and he will reign from that city. So it will become the city of righteousness because the righteous king will be there. As we are told in Psalm 132, where it says, God has chosen Zion. He has chosen Jerusalem as his dwelling place. Cities come and cities go, but Jerusalem remains to this day. And it will become a holy city cleansed of its sin, washed of its shame when Christ returns to this earth. And it is from there that the Lord Jesus Christ will lead his people. Then Jerusalem will truly be the city of peace. But when the people returned from their captivity in Babylon, there was no peace in the city of Jerusalem. The city was in ruins. The people were without food. And they were being threatened and attacked by the people around them. Things did not look very promising for them just the way sometimes things do not look promising to us. But like them, we should not be in despair. We need to take a lesson from Zechariah, from the book of Zechariah, the prophet. Zechariah was given eight visions. The reason he was given those visions was to encourage the people of God and to give them hope, something that perhaps we need today. We need encouragement, don't we? We need hope. And you may recall that uh, Zechariah received a vision, his first vision, of the Messiah riding on a battle horse, ready to take back the city of Jerusalem. And he also received another vision a vision of the horns of an animal fighting against the people of God, but in the end, the enemies of God are destroyed. And now, he receives a third vision. God has a plan for Jerusalem. Jerusalem is part of the eternal plan of God, so they will not be destroyed. And so, he says in verse 1 of Zechariah chapter 2, 
Then, while I was still awake, and I was thinking about those first two visions, then I received another vision. So I lifted up my eyes, and I looked, and behold, there was a man. Perhaps uh, it was the same man who was seated on that battle horse in the first vision. Who was that man? That was the Messiah, wasn't it? That was the Lord Jesus Christ. And this man, Zechariah tells us, had a measuring line in his hand. Midah in Hebrew, a reed or a rope uh, to be used the way that we might use a ruler or a yardstick uh, or even a tape measure. And so I said to this man, where are you going? And he said to me, to measure Jerusalem, Maved in Hebrew, to survey the city and to see how wide it is and to see how long it is. Jesus Christ is the master builder. He is the architect of our salvation, and today he is building his church. And then, Zechariah says in verse 3, Behold, once again I saw that angel who was speaking to me before. And, and he was going out, and another angel was going out to meet him. And the second angel said to the first angel, run, roots in Hebrew, run quickly and speak, daver in Hebrew, speak plainly, speak clearly, to that young man, speak to Zechariah, and say to him, there will come a day when Jerusalem will be so vast that it will be inhabited by many people who belong to the Lord, and they will be like the sand of the sea, we are told in Hosea 1.10. So many that they cannot be counted. So many that they cannot be numbered. So Jerusalem will be like a city that is without walls because of the multitude of the men and of the cattle within it. For I, declares the Lord in verse five, I will be like a wall of fire around the city of Jerusalem, around the people of God. God surrounds us with his protection. A wall of protection. A wall of salvation. A wall of deliverance. And I will be the glory. Kavod. I will be the splendor of that city so the people will say, the Lord is there in her midst among her people. Ho there, it says in verse 6. Hoi, hoi in Hebrew. Look and listen and pay attention to my words. Flee, nus in Hebrew. Escape from the land of Babylon whose army came into the city of Jerusalem from the north. Escape, declares the Lord. Escape from the grip of the evil of this world. For I dispersed you to the north and to the south and to the east and to the west, as far as the four winds of the heavens declares the Lord, because of your rebellion, because of your disobedience, 
declares the Lord. Ho, Zion, it says in verse 7. Hoy, in Hebrew, heed my words. Escape. Malet, in Hebrew. Slip away. Run away. You who are living with the daughter of Babylon. And how many today live with the daughter of Babylon? Abandon your wicked ways before it is too late. And do not be like Lot's wife. Do not look back at the evil from which you have been delivered so that you do not want to escape, so that you cannot escape. Return to the safety of the Lord. Return to the city of the one true God. Strong words. Not just for the people in the time of Zechariah. Perhaps they are words for us today. For thus says the Lord in verse 8, the Lord of hosts, the Father in heaven. Listen to this. He says, seeking after the glory and after the honor of the Lord, God the Father has sent his Son against the nations which plunder you. Shalel in Hebrew, which take you captive. For if he, he who touches you, Nageh, he who strikes you, he who hurts you, he strikes the apple of my eye. Bava in Hebrew. He strikes the center of my eye. God says it is like they have stuck a finger in my eye when they strike you. I feel the pain. That's what he's saying there. For behold, I will wave my hand over them, he says. Nueh, I will shake my fist at them in judgment. So they will become plunder. Shalol in Hebrew. They will become victims of their slaves to consume them. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me, says the Messiah. Sent me as your deliverer, as your redeemer, as your savior. So what is the response? What should be their response? What should be our response to these things? It says in verse 10, sing for joy. Ranan, rejoice. Rejoice always. And be glad, O daughter of Zion. For behold, I am coming to you. And I will dwell in your midst, declares the Lord Jesus Christ. But not only to you, he says in verse 11, but many nations, both Jew and Gentile, will join themselves to the Lord in that day for their salvation. And so they will become my people. Then I will dwell in your midst. If you truly do belong to me, you will know. You will know that this is true. You will understand the truth of these things that I speak to you, that the Lord of hosts, the Father in heaven, has sent me, the Son, to you from the glory of heaven. This is Jesus Christ. The Messiah speaking to his people in the book of Zechariah, speaking to them today, speaking to us today. And in that day, it says in verse 12, the Lord will possess 
Judah as his portion, as his own, in the holy land of the nation of Israel. Perhaps the only time that phrase is used in the Bible. It will be a holy land. And I will again choose Jerusalem, God says, as my own. So wait patiently. Submit yourself to the will of God in Christ, the will of God for you. And he says, be silent, all flesh, before the Lord. Be silent before what he has to say to you today. For God is stirred up from his holy habitation, ma'on in Hebrew, from his dwelling place in heaven. Judgment is about to come. Judgment with blazing fire and with blazing glory. And the world will be judged in righteousness, in his righteousness. And he will judge the world through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.